geometric curves and motion of the particles. There's also more some kind of coordinates. Right, it starts off with a bit of applied maths reminding. So I just want to have a quick look at this. We have a position vector of a particle at a time t is r equals xi plus yj plus zk. And to get the velocity, we differentiate it. And to get the speed, we find the modulus of the velocity. And to get the acceleration, it's a differentiation of the velocity or the second derivative of the position vector. And that's all we're going to go through for the first few slides. Right, this is just a quick example of that in practice. So we have our position vector here, which is r cosine omega t i plus r sine omega t j plus b t k. Now to get the velocity, we differentiate it, which is minus r omega sine omega t i plus r omega cosine omega t j plus b k. And to get the speed, we find the modulus of it. So we square everything, and then we square root it to make sure there's no negatives or anything. Uh, and this cancels down to this, which is r squared omega squared plus b squared, as if you could take out r squared and omega squared as a common factor. You're left with uh, sine squared plus cosine squared, and that equals 1. Sine squared plus cosine squared. It's one, so that shows up for this. And to get the acceleration, we differentiate the velocity, and that gives us this, which is minus omega squared r cosine omega t i minus omega squared r sine omega t j. Now, one thing we can recognize from this is that speed is constant, as there is no t involved, and t is what changes, which is time. Right, well, we now we're on to polar coordinates, and as you rem should remember, we have x equals r cosine theta, and y equals r sine theta. A good way to remember it is x is a cross, and cos sounds like cross, so if you have trouble, remember which which. Um, now, here is a curve, as, as well as being put in polar coordinates, it can be specified as a function of theta. So r theta equals r theta cosine theta i plus r theta sine theta j. Now, some more definitions that go with this are r hat, which is the unit vector parallel to r, and theta hat, which is the unit vector perpendicular to r. So some things we can safely say already are that the modulus of theta and the modulus of r both equal to 1. Now that is because, similar to the last question, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, and we, so we're squaring them, and then we're square rooting again to make sure there's no negatives. And the sine squared and the cosine squared, because they're adding, they'll become 1 and just disappear. And here, theta hat times r hat is 0 because they're perpendicular. Now because this is parallel to this, and this is perpendicular to this, they're obviously crossing the perpendicular. Also, we can also use these as they're analogous to i and j, which means they can be used to plot any points, but they're just because uh, r theta are not constant, which and i and j always are. Now here's just a reminder of the last equation we were using, the r theta, so that's just a reminder, that's why it's in red. Now if we were to differentiate it, we get this, and we're differentiating r hat. So we get the minus r theta i plus cosine theta j, and if you remember, this is the same as theta hat. Now some people might uh, realise that straight away, but that's just a simple proof. Uh, now, things we know again, we know r hat times theta hat equals zero. Well, we showed that last time, didn't we? And using what we learned in the last lecture, which is just up there, uh, r theta, r hat even, times r hat prime is zero, because we proved that last time. 
Uh, now, looking at this, back to here, r theta is equal to r theta times hat theta. Now, r theta and r theta, and then the rest is hat theta, so that's true. Now, if we were to differentiate that, we can use the product rule, which gives us r prime theta equals r prime theta r hat plus r theta r prime hat. And then, as we know here, we can tell that because because of this, we can tell theta hat is the same as r prime hat. So we can change this over and put r uh, theta hat, sorry. And this is a standard equation of the parametric curve. Think of these as like i and j, as if they're like that. Right, now the last thing is the arc length of the parametric curve. Now this is like an integral sign, but it's kind of got like a p at the top. So it kind of looks like a big p because it's a parametric curve. Now if you wanted to find the length of a di uh, of the, part or the distance that a particle has traveled between the points t1 and t2, this is the formula you would use. You differentiate the, the equation of the line and then you find the modulus of it. So say we have this, which is just a simple one. We have RT equals XI plus YJ plus ZK. Now we differentiate each of the parts and find the modulus of it. So we've squared them all and found the square root. And then of course we'll put these different values in. Now you can do the same with polar coordinates. Now before we found this equation, didn't we? So we have r theta equals r theta times r hat. And we differentiated it before in the last slide. And we found this, which is r theta, r prime theta, sorry, equals r prime theta r hat plus r theta theta hat. And that's the standard equation of a parametric function here. So, like I said, think of these as i and j. So we've got to square this and square root it, uh, plus the square root this and square root it, just like here. So we put that in there and that in there. And that's basically it.